Good morning. So uh, back to Snippet Pixie next. Um, and we're in the middle of um, working with settings on the GUI. <clears throat> I got into a little bit of a sticky situation at the end of the last session. Um, trying to handle if I'm trying to save something that's empty um, and I don't really want to save something that's empty. Um, so it's not really wanting to do an, an insert and then handling the get of it as well. So I think I was thinking about this earlier today. I was thinking maybe I need to change things up instead of doing an upset. I think maybe I should just call this save. Um, and then better change the comment as well. So when a setting comes in with its key and its value, this is on the GUI. Um, I want to get the current value and that will be empty without an error if it doesn't exist already. Um, if what we're trying to save um, is the same, basically, if both are empty, then we've got nothing to do. Um, either way, we're basically assuming that there isn't a record and that's fine because that's the default. Empty means no record. We don't care. It was done. Then this is where we were coming unstuck. Handle previously saved empty value. Maybe save an empty string delete setting. I think that's the solution. I forgot I even put a to do there for that. So I think we can break this down into a few simple ifs. Let's do this. So if the current value is not equal to empty, and the value is also not equal to empty. So we've got a previous value and we have something worth saving. Then we should just update. Let's simplify this. If if the current value is empty, so basically we haven't got a saved setting already in theory, if I'm managing it correctly, which is a big if actually, Yeah, see, that's the, this is the issue. Because it's a database and someone could muck about with it. I 
we could end up thinking that empty means there isn't a record, but there is. So therefore the add will break. I think maybe Maybe we can solve that though in the um, in the API, uh, the back end. Yeah, we could do that. This is what we assume is going to be correct. In fact, there's something to be said for this and all its fun all its thinking to be done on the back end. Then I don't have to worry about it on the front end at all in any client not just the GUI, CLIs, third parties, they could just hit save setting and it does the right thing. Hmm, that would be handy actually. Okay, let's finish thinking it through here. And then I think I'm going to just port it over to the daemon. And have a slim version in the interface. Let's do that. Okay. So, um, Yeah, because I think what will happen is this will change on the daemon side. The get setting, it will actually be returning a number of rows, potentially. Oh no, it'll be a database side thing. So I'll have a no, no rows. And I can use that to determine whether I should just do a quick delete. If, if the value coming in is empty which solves the problem there. That's what I'm missing at the moment. I don't know whether the empty means there isn't a record or there is an em a record with an empty value. And that's my issue because I could be trying to do an add later on when really I should be doing an update or a delete. So yeah, okay. Definitely need to be closer to the metal there and do the da database side of things. So, okay, let's carry on here though. Uh, we've got current value. If both are empty, we're going to delete or whatever. If the current value is not empty and the value is not empty, we're going to assume we're going to be doing some sort of update. If the current value is empty and the, current, and the new value is not, we should be doing an add. An ad. And in any other scenario, in this scenario, really what we're saying is if we're not doing an update, and we're not doing an add, we'll create 
and we're going to be doing a delete. Okay, and we don't do that in the API. So I'm already at a point where I really need to do this in the daemon. Maybe that comment's wrong at the moment as well. Oh no, it's right. Okay, let's nick this. And go play in the daemon code. So, there's two areas where I need to do this change. At the moment, we have an update setting. An add setting. And a get, but we don't have a delete. Um, and this is all debus stuff, so that's possibly okay. What we could probably do is remove the add and the update. And instead, do the save. Let's do that. So. We're not working with the nap anymore. We're working with a service. That's the dbus service. We'll add, update, or delete a setting for the given key and value. We are going to do a lot of this, actually, that seems similar. So we're going to be taking hmm. Yeah, I'm going to take this and then I'm going to muck about with it. So, I'm going to begin the transaction. Uh, the only thing we're going to return is a yay or a nay. So, if we can't begin the transaction, we are going to fail back. Then we're going to defer a transaction rollback. If uh, let's take this. Update stuff. Stick in here. The transaction stuff goes at the end. So what we're going to do is right, I'm going to clean up some of this so it's less red. Uh, we'll do these indi individual now. So first things first. Get the 
has set in. Now this is different now, so S snippets get set in in the transaction with the key. If we get back an error. Right, this is uh, actually this is a good point up here. Let me just double check this actually. Right, yeah, no, no rows is just empty and no error. Okay, I think we'll keep that. So come in here. If we've got something and we want to save something. If the error is not equal to nil, we throw it on an update. <clears throat> if the number of rows is wrong, we throw it as an error as well. Otherwise, we should be good. And we should be able to fall through to the commit. If the current value is empty, and we have something to save, then we want to do an add. So that is <clears throat> snippets, add setting for the transaction. Uh, is it just key and value? Yeah, and we'll get an error back. Yeah. Key value. Um, and add setting is pure and simple, turns an error or nothing. We don't care about the result. So hopefully it's all okay. We don't have an error, we don't return it, and we fall through. Otherwise, in any other scenario, if so, like if we current value is not equal to empty, but the value is empty, then we want to delete it. If the current value is not empty, sorry, no, if the current value is empty and the value is empty so not here we want to delete it 
So that's where the new thing happens. Hmm. No, we do need to be careful there, don't we? No, we can always try it, I guess. Hmm, okay. So... Basically, in any scenario where value is empty, regardless of current value, that's basically what we're doing here. We want to delete. Which I don't think we've got a function for yet, so we'll have to do that. Don't have a remove snippet setting. We don't have a delete either. Okay. So we need to update this. Probably as simple as that. We'll see. I'm not quite sure what deletes look like in um, the Go database handling. <clears throat> uh, what we're going to call this then? Remove, I guess? <clears throat> Excuse me. I better check what I've done in Snippet to keep it consistent. Just remove, no deletes. Okay. Remove setting. Moves. Set in with given key. What? Where did my cursor go there? Thank you. Um, I wonder if I can do that. Yeah, that is wrong. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what's going to happen there. I don't know how the database handling in um, Go is going to go, 
uh, there's nothing to delete. But we'll see. We'll find out soon enough. Um, so, yeah, remove. Setting removes a setting with a given key. Delete from settings where setting key equals that. Um, and we need to exec just the key. I wonder why that doesn't... I didn't pick up on the fact that I've only got the one placeholder. That's a shame. Okay. Then back in the bus, we now can remove setting for the transaction. Oh, okay. <laughs> Didn't pick up on that. And we'll just do the usual things here. So basically, if the value is empty, we're just going to remove it. Uh, and assuming all of these scenarios pass, don't return an error. Which I'm doing wrong. Here and here. So that error should be a dbus error because we're in dbus here, dbus mode. Get set in, have a problem, return a dbus error. Do an update, return a dbus error. Update too many things, return a dbus error. Can't add, return a debus error. Remove a setting, return a debus error. If they all pass, if whichever one hit, commit, return a debus error if they can't commit, we're done. Okay. And I think. That means I can remove the add and the update. So we can get or we can save through the dbus and that's all we need. And it'll work out in theory will hope the right thing to do. Yeah, I think that's right. Then back in app. Oh, I better update the service stuff. So, um, debus service, get set in. And save. This is what we need to do with client side now to call that debus stuff. So that's going to be save. Save setting will add, update, or delete a setting for the given key and value.
Do I even need to mention that, actually? That's just confusing, isn't it? So maybe limit to specific. So you set in so you set in for the given key and value. empty value quits returns setting to its Default. That probably is a little bit more API nice. And we'll just get say get setting for get yeah, so that's wrong, isn't it? Get setting. Okay, now in the service, which is where we implement this, so update the comment. Get rid of Yeah. Don't want the ad anymore. So this is the um the client that's gonna call the D bus over the to the called basically the daemon so we have a get which takes the key and turns a string and or basically our save setting takes the key and value potentially returns an error and did i do that on the interface okay Save setting key value. Okay. Don't care about rows updated anymore. We are not storing anything anymore. So we're doing a call. Save. Okay. 
Save is good. Better call it save. So we now have, in setting, we have we have add setting, get setting. Remove setting and update setting. Hopefully they're okay. Uh, I probably need to write some trans some tests for these in a bit. Let's just give it an actual play first, and then our D bus the daemon is going to use. It's going to have sorry a get setting and save setting. Just checking that works okay. Yeah. Then we have an interface to those specified. Get setting and save setting. That's what a client needs to do. And our actual client, because we're using a little library for that, for both clients, we are just calling the dbus service and grabbing the result. Forget, we're good. And for save, we just check the error. Okay. And that means in our GUI, where we're actually using this now, we no longer to add or update. We have a save setting. which effectively does similar to that because we've wrapped it all up now. This could be much better now. Much cleaner. It's just a wrapper to the deeper stuff. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's fine, isn't it? Yep. Okay. Now So we've got the settings table at the moment. Let's go into the settings screen and clean that up because that's going to be a mess at the moment. Okay. We have Let's um let's bring that up and have a play. If it will build. Okay. Let's take it over to workspace five. 
make it a lot smaller, he says. All right, going to the settings page. This is what we're working on, the focus search box. Um, so. I think we've kind of done that to do there. When that input, the focus search box, when it's value, I just checked, changes, we're going to be binding. We're going to, sorry, we're bound to the checked value uh, to the focus search box variable, which is going to default to true because that's the default. We're in the work that. Okay. Right, we're in the middle. Right, get a focus search box. So on startup, we assume the value coming back is empty. And we do get set in. If we get anything, if we get an error, we're just going to show that error. So the value doesn't get updated. Otherwise, we set the value depending on whatever string comes back. If it comes back as false, yeah, so it's brilliant. So anything but false, and it's true because the default is true. That's fine, okay. So that should handle the initial state. Then we need to do something to update it. So we're gonna have this function called update focus search box. It's gonna take a value, which ultimately will be the bound one it's going to do a save setting key is focus search box and the value is whatever's coming which will be a boolean we're then going to catch any errors and throw them and otherwise Uh, okay, yeah, I've got an issue there. Well, I'll sort that out in a second. But otherwise, we're going to return the value. But what we do need to do here is effectively that in reverse, sort of. Um, 
yeah, we'll create another variable for this. And we'll just call it um, setting value in this case. So setting value is going to be, well, we can just do a simple, simple thing like this. So if the value is not equal to, well, <laughs> I can yeah such a, it's such a weird one this because I've got reverse <laughs> reverse logic on what we save um, but I can do this I can do the bare minimum the most basic is if we have a value of true then we send Well, empty really, because that's the default. But let's be positive here and do true. And then otherwise false. Just be very basic. Just so that we can see it in the database. Now we need to trigger that function. So when the variable changes here, focus search box, we want to call that function. And we're going to do a reactive style. So rather than doing like an on click or whatever, and then checking the value, we're just going to do like as this value changes, so that means doing this. Just do update focus search box um, and focus search box. And that's reactive there. So as that gets changed, it's going to have to call this function because it's, re it's in a reactive statement. Got a label there for reactive. It has to do something because that's changed. So it's going to call this function with a new value. That value is going to come in, get turned into a string. Let's change that to string value. And let's not escape that when I do that. That's a bit more descriptive. Uh, and then it'll go do the save setting and we're done in theory. Let's see. Unknown invalid method save setting. Hello. Wonder where that was, because that's got to be as known. All right, let's trace this through. So it's going to call app, and that's got save setting. Here we have a save setting. And it's on the service key value, and then it's calling save setting key value, which is in theory correct. And then in dbus on the daemon, we 
We have save setting. So where is that going wrong? And why is that being called right there? What's in the database? That's interesting. Let's have a look at the front end. This is all the generated code that Wales creates for me. Save setting. Oh, hold on a second. There is no value. That's what I need. I bet that's it. Because it's just an error being returned. Okay, we'll try that. Nope. Hmm. Okay, let's do a quick bit of debugging here then. It's gonna be this. It's coming through. It's doing that. Save settings there. 
returns an error. So with all the JavaScript side looks okay. It's got to be the Dbus side. Okay, so let's confirm this is here. So runtime. Log. Info. In the context. In app dot save setting. Do that. Now that in theory is called in this. Now I'm not in uh, runtime anymore here in theory. So we can just do a um, format to print line. service save setting I reckon we'll get the first, but not the second, because we're going to get an error here. Let's do that quick test. Yeah, okay. We got so it called the uh, from the JavaScript, it called the app, and then that's called the service, and then it's failing on the debus side somewhere. So Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, this. It's trying this returning an error and not a debus error. That's the reason. Ah, come on. That's what we need to do. Oh, man. Yeah, that's fine. Should be a debus error. Which will we get? There's only doing debus. Yeah. Right, let's give that a quick go before we take out the debug stuff. Mm 
<laughs> well, it wasn't that bad. I am not seeing where the problem is here. Oh. <laughs> I've done it again. <laughs> Gotta make the daemon. The daemon has a new function called save setting. Oh god. I need to get into place something there where it's like it just rebuilds and reruns the daemon because this is a common mistake I make. <sighs> Let's try it once more and then we'll take out the debug. And it's all there. And yay! Okay. <laughs> right, now on that first pass, that's potentially added something to the database. It has. Cool. So that's there now. That's because I'm using the string. I'm positively doing true now, um, which may or may not do in the future, but it's fine for the moment. Um, and now if I switch that off, I saw it call the debug stuff there. And if I go back, and refresh, it should say false now. It does. That's good. Now, if I go back to the daemon, uh, sorry, the app, and quit, in theory, it will stay false. We will see. Hence, 
and it doesn't. Ah, uh, okay. Reactive is too early in the scenario there. Okay, so what what's happening there? Uh, let's just double check that's actually updated it has here. Um, I have put that there. And that is triggering this change. I'm just in updating it. Hmm. Well, no, this is probably updating beforehand, and then. This is get called potentially. Mm. What do I do about that? I've got things around the wrong way, really. Hmm. So this is why I'd normally use a store and grab it early on. And then before you even get to this kind of scenario, you've got the value already. There's a bit of a problem here. And I can't call this async function directly in here. Okay, what I will do then Okay, I'm going to keep this scenario here where we use a on mount to actually update this to what it should be from get focus and instead I will do the update focus on a trigger rather than reactive there because that's getting triggered as soon as this happens effectively. Um, so I 
Yeah. What we'll do. I'll keep that. And then on presumably change. Yeah. Uh, we'll do uh, well, let's try this version we'll call the function like this um, Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what we're going to get on that. Let's double check. I presume we're going to get event dot. Value. I've checked, will I? No, oh, just a generic. Well, I wonder if I can cheat and just use that because it's reactive. Maybe we'll see, but maybe. the value updates early. I can't remember. Okay. So when the input changes its value in theory, I'm going to call update search, update focus search box um, with the value, but we're not that certain it's going to work. We'll see. I should have put some debug in um, for the values being sent to the back end. Okay. So, for the first time, we'll do that. It's done something. In the database, we have false now. Okay. Uh, let's do that again. We have true. Do it again to turn it off. Okay. And now I'll quit. Run again. And hopefully it stays off. Yeah, okay, good. Do it again. Oh, just to check, make sure there's nothing funky going on here. Yeah. We're good. Okay. So that's the setting being saved. Okay. 
now what we're going to do is not in this mode but in search and paste mode if that's turned off we should focus the list rather than the search box when we come in uh, but that's something to do another day because i kind of need to get on with my day let's get a shot of this debug stuff get rid of that now uh debug 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 i did it in app and i did it in service Make sure that's clean. Didn't call, didn't call, didn't call. Okay, we're good. All right, let's save that off. Um, and we'll do actually I should probably put a couple of to-dos in no no I'll do that afterwards it's not dirty up the commit Okay, there's more, there's quite a bit of changes there. Let's quickly review that. Okay, so we have right apps, fine. Dbus. Why have we got format on there? Hold on. Oh yeah, that's fine. Uh, get a setting, gets a setting for a given key. Uh, saves a setting for the given key and value, empty value returns setting to its default. Okay. Which value returns it to its fault, default. Actually, hold on a second. Search and paste, no, that's fine. Remove setting, get a setting, and get a little fix up. Setting screen. I might at some point still return to using the store there, but for the moment, that's all we need. Just the function calls. Okay, that's good to go.
changed. I haven't tested. I don't want to test on this. Hold on. I might have broken something. Yep. Okay, I thought I might. All right, so. I obviously do a test. Then we get a no pose error. And don't do that anymore. This is why I need to update the settings. Because, uh, sorry, the tests. All, I, all I've got is these at the moment. I need to do uh, other stuff here. What line was that then? 85. Ah. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. So I need to just do this then. We can get the value now. And we expect it to be empty. and expected. So it okay. Um, yeah, I haven't got time to be uh, doing more tests, but I'll just commit that one for stars.
This is interesting. We're gonna. be kind of negating that in a way, but... Let's see. Alright, so, to-dos. Move setting. Um, that's kind of all there, actually. And then on the D-Bus side of things... Yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff for all the snippets here. But nothing for settings because this is all new. Let's do this for next time just to make sure they're rounded out and I haven't missed anything. Uh, but also, um, we need to do this snippets. to focus is going to have to come off but it's going to have to be conditioned It's a couple of to-dos the next things I need to do. All right, I best get on with my day. So, um, till next time, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.